diabetes skyrockets the risk of death from blood clot events like heart attack, stroke, or pulmonary embolism. So today we're looking at how, and most importantly, what you can do to protect yourself. This isn't only for people who already have type 1 or type 2 diabetes, but anyone who suspects that they may be at a future risk. Because these problems develop slowly over time, often without people realizing until a lot of the damage is already done. We'll also look at danger situations like flying, compression socks, the best and worst foods, and more. Okay, first up, why does blood clot? When you cut yourself, your body's emergency response team springs into action. Tiny cells called platelets rush to the injury site, clumping together to form a plug. From here, a mesh forms, strengthening the plug and sealing up the wound. Quite remarkably well, actually. Remember, platelets, because they're very important in a moment. This natural band-aid is crucial for stopping blood clots and protecting against infections. Likewise, blood clots protect against internal injury. If a vessel wall ruptures or your body has a trauma, it will respond by forming a clot to prevent internal bleeding. However, it's a delicate balance. When blood clots form without good reason, or the body doesn't properly dissolve unused clots, it can be deadly. If a clot obstructs the arteries supplying your brain, you get stroke. A clot in cardiovascular arteries can trigger heart attack. And pulmonary embolism occurs when a clot blocks blood flow into your lungs. So how does diabetes increase these clots? There are a few reasons why. Firstly, diabetes interferes with your platelets, those tiny little blood cells that patch up injuries. In both type 1 and 2 diabetes, platelets become overly reactive, clumping together more readily than they should even when there's no cut or injury to heal. This is known as platelet hyperaggregation. It's like a team of overzealous road repair workers who start patching up a road that isn't damaged, causing unnecessary traffic jams and blood vessels. Essentially, clots form where they're not needed, blocking blood flow. This hyperactive clotting isn't limited to people with full-blown diabetes either. It can happen to anyone with high blood sugar levels. Soon we'll discuss early warning signs that can appear in the weeks or months before a blood clotting event. But first, the good news is that platelet hyperaggregation can be quickly turned down in many cases. A 2015 study found that just after 30 weeks of regular exercise, spanning from 10 minutes of walking up to longer and more intense sessions, Patients with metabolic syndrome significantly reduced platelet aggregation, improved ectonucleotidase enzyme function, and dampened down thrombogenesis, significantly reducing their risk of deadly blood clots. Another study found that people who work out between one and three times each week had a 28% lower risk of venous thromboembolism than those who didn't exercise at all. Of course, the level of risk reduction will depend on how long you exercise, how intensely, as well as various other factors. If you're not adjusted to regular exercise, start off gently, going for a walk, tai chi, swimming, or gentle yoga. Talk to your healthcare provider before starting a new exercise routine and listen to your body, adjusting for any pains or old injuries. The key is to find ways to move that you enjoy and will do regularly. After all, consistency is key. More tips coming up, but first, if you're finding this useful, please click the like button. Click subscribe and turn notifications on to see our new videos as they are released. Okay, now if everything's working well, your endothelium, the inner lining of your blood vessels, ensures that blood flows freely and also regulates blood clotting. However, when this lining gets damaged, it becomes more prone to forming clots. It's like the blood vessel walls become sticky, catching platelets and clotting factors more easily, setting the stage for a blockage. Some of the worst foods for this include trans fats from fried foods, commercial baked goods, and processed snacks. 
Amongst other damage, trans fats impair your body's ability to produce nitric oxide, one of the most important compounds for keeping endothelial function healthy. Without enough nitric oxide, your vessels become stiff, narrow, and more prone to blockages. Even if trans fats are banned where you live, there are often loopholes. Either way, fried and heavily processed foods are toxic. We'll discuss a few of the best nitric oxide foods to reverse damage in a moment. Now, the other two worst foods to limit are added sugar and things like bread, which are made from refined green flours. Refined grains act exactly like sugar in your body, spiking blood glucose and damaging your endothelial lining through a process called glycation, where excess glucose molecules stick to proteins and fats in the blood. This messes up how these proteins and fats work, damages your endothelial lining, and as we discussed earlier, also leads to platelet hyperaggregation, skyrocketing the risk for blood clots. So stay away from candy and added sugar, and of course, sodas are a no-go. Bread and other flour-based foods are potentially even worse than pure sugar, because not only do they spike blood sugar, refined grains can damage the intestinal lining. This lining allows nutrients to enter the bloodstream while blocking harmful substances. However, when it becomes compromised, toxins and bacteria can infiltrate. The problem was once thought to be limited to those with celiac disease or gluten sensitivities, but current research suggests it's far more widespread. Next, we'll cover the best foods, but for now, the key takeaway is to stay away or limit refined grains in bread, breakfast cereals, pastries, etc. On that note, download our free PDF recipe book, Amazing Alternatives to Rice, Pasta, and Bread, which contains over 50 diabetic-friendly recipes, including breads and baked goods that support rather than harm your health. Get that and two other diabetes-fighting resources by clicking the link in the description or visiting diabeticstalk.com. It's completely free. Okay, let's look at some of the best foods for preventing and potentially reversing blood clots. Garlic is one of the most healthful foods known to man, including its unique ability to balance platelet aggregation. Ginger, cayenne pepper, and cinnamon are all known as natural blood thinners, while cloves contain a potent antioxidant called eugenol, which helps to repair veins and improve blood circulation. Talk to your doctor before significantly increasing your intake of these, especially if you take blood thinning medications like warfarin or aspirin. Together, these may excessively thin the blood or affect blood pressure. Next, extra virgin olive oil is the darling of heart health, and beyond its many other benefits, a number of studies show that the phenols in extra virgin olive oil helped prevent blood clots. Leafy greens can be tricky, but top cardiologists recommend eating the same amount of leafy greens every day. Leafy greens can interact with some blood thinning medications, which is why some people avoid them. However, they also contain various compounds vital for healthy blood vessels. For most people, being consistent and balancing intake is key, but again, talk to your healthcare provider for custom advice. On to some superstar ingredients now. Kiwi fruit contains a special compound called actinidin, which is believed to help break down unwanted proteins, including those surrounding blood clots. Regularly eating fish, walnuts, flax seeds, and avocados has been shown in numerous studies to be beneficial. Amongst other nutrients, the omega-3 fatty acids in these have potent anti-inflammatory properties which combat excessive blood clotting. Beets, watermelon, pomegranate, citrus, fruits, nuts, seeds, and dark chocolate all contain compounds which your body can convert to nitric oxide, promoting healthy vasodilation and improved blood circulation. That said, beets, chocolate, and some nuts do contain oxalates. So if you have a history of oxalate kidney stones, talk to your nutritionist before significantly increasing your consumption. And the top prize goes to cruciferous vegetables, often described as the most important foods for artery health due to the unique compound sulforaphane. 
These include broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli sprouts. Keep watching to see how to get 10 times more sulforaphane out of your cruciferous veggies. But first, let's cover a few warning signs to be aware of. Leg pains can be a common but often overlooked symptom of deep vein thrombosis. DVT is nasty on its own and can lead to pulmonary embolism when a clot breaks free and travels up your leg, obstructing blood flow to your lungs. People may notice a persistent unexplained pain, often described as a cramp or soreness in the calf or thigh muscle. This is sometimes accompanied by swelling, redness, or warm sensations. Recognizing this early is crucial for prompt medical intervention. Aside from leg pain, there are a few more subtle early warning signs. Shortness of breath, especially if it appears suddenly and for no apparent reason, can be a major red flag. Rapid heartbeat, chest pain, or feeling of lightheadedness are other signs to get checked out. In the weeks or months leading up to a clotting event, some might notice increased fatigue, swelling in the limbs without apparent cause, or skin discoloration, which might appear redder or darker than usual. More severe and urgent symptoms include intense chest pain that may feel like heavy pressure, which could indicate a heart attack. Sudden, severe headaches, difficulty speaking, or problems seeing require immediate medical attention as they can be life-threatening. Less common signs include nausea, vomiting, or coughing up blood. High blood pressure increases the risk for clotting events, so as always, getting it under control is going to reduce your risk. Remember too that blood pressure is always fluctuating depending on your food, stress, sleep, alcohol intake, exercise, etc. That's why Christmas Day has the most heart attacks of any other day, when many of these factors combine in one short period. So don't push yourself too hard. Next, avoid long periods of sitting, such as during flights or car journeys. Immobility can slow down blood circulation, increasing the risk of blood clots in the deep veins of your legs, causing deep vein thrombosis. To mitigate this risk, take an effort to stand up, stretch, and walk around every hour or so. Simple leg exercises like ankle circles or foot pumps can also help maintain blood flow even when you're confined to your seat. For those working at a desk, take short breaks to walk around the office and you might consider a sit-stand desk. Compression socks are another valuable tool, especially during prolonged periods of immobility. These socks apply gentle pressure to your legs, promoting blood flow and reducing the risk of clotting. Talk to your doctor first. Staying hydrated is key for everything that happens in your body, so drink plenty of water. Herbal teas offer a good boost of polyphenol compounds known for their anti-inflammatory benefits, and we'll link that information about the best teas at the end of this video. Smoking is one of the biggest risk factors for blood clots, as it directly damages the lining of your blood vessels. Similarly, excess alcohol contributes to clot formation through various mechanisms, so moderation or abstinence is key. Get plenty of the foods we discussed earlier, as well as broadly focusing on a balanced diet filled with colorful vegetables, fruits, berries, nuts, seeds, quality protein, and healthy fats. For the broccoli sulforaphane trick and more, watch our video on blood sugar hacks every type 2 diabetic should know, or watch 9 incredible teas for cardiovascular health. We'll leave links to them in the description box or click the image on the screen now. Please click this like button and subscribe to Diabetics Talk to stay up to date with new videos.